Uh, it is, uh, I believe, episode one by Jess Barbagallo and directed by Brooke O'Hara, and it is called How Many Roads Must a Dyke Go Down? How Many Roads? <laughs> so enjoy episode one! Last season on Cream, long-term partners and owners of Room for Cream called it quits after Robbie popped the big question and Ellie got cold feet. The confused coffeehouse proprietor, Ellie, ran off to find herself out west and things haven't been quite the same since. In other news, Dr. Jane O'Boyle started seeing a lapsed nun named, Ma named Megan, an innocent cherub new to the ways of the muff. <laughs> Lacey Chambers, Jane's erstwhile TA, developed a rather intense drug problem after she broke up with studly girlfriend Dyer Owens, who she found in a compromised position with Cream's new barista, by curious Katie Bosch. <laughs> Lacey briefly rebounded with gender studies student Julie Jaspers, but she hasn't quite recovered from the pain of losing Dyer. And Bailey Donovan finally reunited with high school volleyball star and sweetheart Francesca Bean. But in the cozy town of Sappho, trouble's always brewing and drama's right around the corner, even if it is out of the closet. Creamy, cuddly, complicated, this is Room for Cream. <laughs> Katie. What's wrong? Oh, these books are a mess. I mean, I knew I let things slip, but I didn't know my house was in such disarray. A little morning poetry, Robbie. It's good for the soul. <clears throat> uh, what do you mean? I, I mean, I thought things were going pretty okay. Business hasn't been too terrible. No, we really took a hit. Those few weeks I closed but up shop after Ellie... Come on, Ma, come on. It's just a small loan. No. Come on, Ma, it's not a lot. It's just a few thousand. Help me get this thing off its feet. No! Come on, Ma, I promise I'll pay you back. Ma, you know I'm good for this. Yeah. Double soy yeah. macchiato, short. Thank you very much. Ma, this is a good idea. I wrote up a proposal and everything. Mm -hmm. I got a great crew of guys on this. You know, there's a need in the community. People are excited! Dyer, <laughs> I am not about to throw my money behind a business scheme that involves some scantily clad women Tending local lawns just because a couple of your cronies, your drunken cronies over the boozy butch, have taken a liking to your half baked scheme. Well, this is interesting. It is not interesting, Caddy. My daughter has never shown any ambition in all of her 36 years. Hey, 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 33, like whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Come on, huh? You seem to be forgetting that I am Berkshire County's beer pong champion. And I didn't get that from just sitting on my ass. And now she is proposing opening her own lens Well, I business. think that is a good idea. I know cream, for one, could use a lot of work out front. We can't really afford it right now, Katie. I have not finished. <laughs> Dyer's plan is to hire all of the strippers who have just been laid off over at Lavender Legs to do yard work in costume. <laughs> and do you know what she wants to call it? Oh, I have no idea. Twats who trim! <laughs> could be trimming twats, but I don't really know. What do you think? I mean, you ladies care to weigh in on this? I like the first one. You like twats who trim? Katie, I have come to the town to talk to our accountant. And if the guys from the bearded goat show up, I want you to cut our next delivery in half. Yeah, these bills are out of control, and if I don't figure out something quick, we might just have to drop our line of organics entirely. <laughs> things are worse than I thought. Oh, God. I don't want to find out.
find a new job. I'm still finding myself. <laughs> uh, do you have any gardening or dance experience? Oh, <laughs> I took modern jazz in junior high. Oh, really? Yeah. How do you feel about wearing pasties on <laughs> I mean, after the snow melts, of course. Yeah, this is really not good. Robbie's in bad shape. And how would you feel if your partner ran off and left you with a coffee house that's just barely staying afloat? And the entire day we just grew from an episode oh of Cheers. Oh, I'm saying it. Can I just say it? I would not be first to know. Bailey, did you get off the phone already? I'm going to be late for first period and I want to talk to you. Yes. Yes, Ms. Rogers, I already faxed over the paperwork this morning. And I spoke to your press agent about the address this afternoon. Got it. Already done. Too Splenda? Black? <coughs> you got it. I'll be there in a jiffy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Who are you and where is Bailey? It is Bailey, Dyer. New and improved. Oh. Hang on one second, Dyer. I'm getting a call. I've <laughs> <laughs> been like this all week. She wasn't so cute. I let the field hockey team do drills all over that blackberry. I like your style. So Watch yourself, Owens. Yes, this is Bailey Donovan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> telling you I'm not going to get fucked on this thing. Now you listen to me. You listen to me. If it's not ready by three, you can kiss our business goodbye. And I mean that. <laughs> Some people just don't understand the meaning of the word professionalism. You were saying, Dyer? I, 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 I'm fucking speechless. And I'm bored. <laughs> Come on, Bailey, are you going to take him to school or not? Whoa, stop. Who were you just talking to on the phone? That sounded pretty serious. Hang on, Francesca. <laughs> that was Bill Tucker from Bill's Boxers. He's got Ms. Rosser's dry cleaning and he's trying to screw us, claiming I didn't drop it off before 5 yesterday, when I know for a fact I left him the garments at 445. Miss <laughs> Rogers? You mean that douche who tried to shut down my documentary? She's a walking yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> please don't talk about my boss like that. Katie, I can't really discuss this. Oh, God, I'm running late. Why did you suck you alone this morning? Oh. It's not my fault you couldn't find their harness this morning. You didn't seem to mind that you were running late half an hour ago. Come on. Whatever, Bailey. I'm out. Francesca, Jesus, I'll walk you to school. You're Splenda, dude. <laughs> Thank you. Douche. <laughs> now, what the hell was that all about? I go on vacation for one week, and now Bailey's a married power duck? <laughs> I'm so ashamed. I helped her pick out that. <laughs> Bailey's got a job. She's interning at Randy Rogers' office. You know, the councilwoman who's up for re election. Yeah, we know. Yeah, well, she, there's some new exchange program between their office and Lesbos Community College. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie must have convinced Bailey to go back to school before she left. <laughs> oh man, I can't even believe that little stump even set foot in her office. That cunt Brandy Rogers, she shut down the strip club because of an archaic obscenity law. God, you know, it breaks my heart, all those strippers out there with their stilettos and tiny little clothes with picket signs in front of the city center. God! <laughs> Bullshit. Don't talk to me like that, Julie. I have 
plenty of friends who are sex workers. Okay, ladies, ladies, ladies. Calm <laughs> down, okay? Julie, I think Katie's just trying to be helpful. And Katie, I think Julie's had a, la a stressful couple of weeks and she's just trying to decompress. I think Julie needs to remove her head from her ass. Hey, Dyer. Everyone is super excited about the landscaping plan. We even came up with some ideas for um, press shots and Ooh, stuff like I that. bet you did. Oh, no. She's not on board yet? Don't worry, Julie. I'm working on it. Eventually she seemed so bored I just ran away to the bathroom. 
I think that she stimulated herself while I was gone. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> it does suck. I was so confused. She'd always been so gentle before. Well, she never cursed at me. I'm afraid she's going to leave me, Lacey, and I don't want to lose her. Megan. Megan, Dr. O'Boyle is a good person. She would never leave you over a silly thing like this. Good sex is important, but it's not the only thing that makes a relationship work. It isn't? <laughs> of course not. Now, it sounds to me like you're a passive bottom who just needs to find a way <laughs> to really channel that natural impulse and put it into a mutually satisfying experience. Okay, leave it to me, Megan. I'm going to have you whipped into shape in no time. <laughs> I deserve a raise. <laughs> <laughs> Professor O'Boyle, will you kindly cease that infuriating behavior? My daughter has induced yet another massive headache, which you are exacerbating to the point where I may have to grab that pencil and shove it up your keister. Yeah, B, sorry. Sorry. I just can't take it anymore. Crossword got you down. No, B. <laughs> That's my sex life. <laughs> <laughs> I am not prepared to discuss this on an empty stomach. Oh, B. Oh, don't mind her, Jane. She's just cranky because it's been so long. Isn't that right, B? Why don't you date, B? You know you're a real catch. And besides, where else would Dyer have inherited her by now? Legendary sex drive. <laughs> My daughter is an anomaly, Patty. When the other kids in the neighborhood were selling lemonade, she was offering free medical examinations to the girls in her kindergarten class. <laughs> I've always been a concerned citizen, so you see, it's just in my nature. And it just so happens there might be a thing or two you all don't know about me. Oh. <laughs> Seasonal beverage? <coughs> or one? <laughs> Randy curmudgeon. <laughs> 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 Seems like a real party in here. You have yeah. no idea. <laughs> you know what? I would love a cup of coffee. And actually, I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit. What can I do for you? Well, my name is Wendy Dooley, and I'm holding auditions for the Sandra Bernhard Community Theater. <laughs> I would really love to hang some flyers in here. Oh, that sounds like fun. What show are you putting on? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Now, as many of you may know, community theater in this town has really taken off over the past few years. Our production of Anything Goes packed the house last year. I saw that. You guys have some great tap numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm wanting to do is channel some of that energy into a more provocative project. See what kinds of dramatic talents this town really has to offer. No! Well, what's the show? I am so excited. You know, I have to say, I have dabbled in the dramatic arts. <laughs> I was part of a traveling puppet show during Vietnam. <laughs> say no to war. Say yes! Here. <laughs> Ladies, this year the Sandra Bernhard Community Theater will be proud to present The Killing of Sister George. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is one of my favorite movies. It was very controversial. The daughters of Belitis urged lesbians to boycott it when it was premiered in 1968. I've never heard of it. Oh, <laughs> Julie, that is a failing on my part. I decided to devote last semester entirely to Marlena Dietrich films. There's just not enough hours in the day. What's the story about, Dr. Julie? Well, it's, it's the story of a woman who everyone wants to put out to pasture. Uh, a gifted actress with a penchant for younger women. <laughs> who is given the axe by a bunch of heartless television executives 
and then goes on to lose her little ninny of a wife, a real, real doe-eyed hustler, child D. <laughs> <laughs> the character is tough, and she is real. Beryl Reed made a legend of Sister George in 1965 at the Duke Theatre in London. And then the following year, at the Velasco in New York. There's a role that can only be played by someone who understands what it is to struggle through adversity, to walk through the fires of hell with humor and a biting wit. But beneath that, there is a vulnerability. Sister George should break your heart. Her greatest flaw is that she's all too human. Oh, come on, Grace. She's a bitch. <laughs> That's why we love her. <laughs> but she's a charming, eccentric bee. And hold. <laughs> this is so wonderful. You two are already giving me some great ideas. So I can hang my flyers here? It's fine by me. I'll just leave them on the counter. I'll be sure to mention it to all of our customers. Thank you so much. This is really wonderful. And I expect to see some of your faces at the tryouts. Wendy? I, I mean, um, Dr. Dooley. Um, what a surprise. Oh, Robbie, I wasn't expecting to run into you in here. How are you? I'm all right. Actually, not so great. There's been quite a bit of upheaval in my life lately. I understand. If it's not one thing, it's often no another. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Robbie, um, I have to run, but if you want to talk, just um, call my secretary and we'll set up an appointment. Thanks. I will. Bye. <laughs> Whoa, what was that all about? You two know each other? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, we do. You're old friends. Not exactly. Well, it's all really kind of embarrassing. <laughs> well, you can tell us, Robbie. Look, you're amongst friends. Um, well, you know, when I first moved to Sappho, I wasn't in such great shape. I uh, didn't have many friends. I felt like my writing wasn't going anywhere. I mean, pretty normal stuff, I guess. But at the time, I really thought there was something wrong with me. So Ellie, yeah, Ellie um, suggested I go into therapy with Dr. Dooley. And I was so resistant at first. I mean, Ellie practically had to drag me there, kicking and screaming. <laughs> That's so funny. Ellie never said anything about it. Yeah, well, some things we kept private. And, you know, it's, it's really sort of frowned upon in my family. Yeah, the Charleses have always been known for their stiff upper lips. You know, what happens in this family stays in this family. Yeah, it was tough being brought up not to express your feelings. My father thinks therapists are quacks. Oh, that's crazy. I still talk to my therapist in New York on the phone. Sometimes daily. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice to afford that. Hmm. It's just so strange <laughs> to run into her. You know, run into your therapist out of the office. And after all this time, looks like she hasn't changed a bit. Why did you stop going, Robbie? Because I didn't need it anymore, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I had all of you guys and, and the coffee shop and Ellie. Well, I guess that's not true anymore, is it? I don't understand why she had to go. I don't either, Robbie. But I miss her too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Come on, maybe she'll come back, right? I mean, who can resist this crew? <laughs> <laughs> it's been months, Dyer. Months. It doesn't mean she's gone forever, Robbie. You just have to be. She's not fucking coming back! I know Ellie, and I know what it means when she makes up her mind. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laying all of this in you guys. Because she made this decision, not me. And I'm the one who has to live with it. Hmm? You say goodbye.
need you to um, I'm going to need you to send out those invitations for the Brandy Rogers Community Garden commemoration. And I want you to limit the, the guests to those under 65. The last thing I want is a bunch of senior citizens sucking down Shirley Temples at my event. Oh, and, oh, these prescriptions need to be filled pronto. Oh, my God. Life is so stressful, you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, all this day in the house. Okay. God, it's so stressful. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing you're taking notes, Bailey. Uh, it's good that you see the inner workings and all the a, a hard working politician. Everything that we have to do day in and day out. Okay, not so hard. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What's this? The mail? Junk, junk, junk. <coughs> oh, the community theater features the um, oh auditions for the killing of Sister George. Do you know anything about this? I haven't heard anything. I've been pretty out of the loop ever since I retired from Cream. I can't believe you ever worked there. Talk about a road to nowhere. <laughs> One step above flipping burgers at the Big Mac, you know, at the drive through <laughs> <laughs> I heard that that Ellie but left it in shambles, completely ran out, and left her partner, Roberta, who doesn't have to pay for business. It is a good thing you got out when you did. Uh, how'd you ever end up there in the first place? Oh, it's not really that interesting, you know, just your normal coming-of-age story. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> well, it was kind of crap at home for me. <clears throat> my parents are pretty religious, and my mom didn't really like it when I told her I thought I was gay. She said she felt weird having me in the house, so I decided not to be there. I hit the road and headed for Sappho. Didn't have a dime to my name. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was just coming into town, soaking wet, fair converse. I didn't even have a coat. Robbie and Ellie were coming back from some couple's camping retreat. Oh, they didn't take the cruise. And Robbie rolled down the window and asked if I wanted a ride. I figured anything was better than the pneumonia I was catching outside. I got into the back seat and woke up two days later. I had such a fever. <laughs> they called my parents to come and pick me up, but they uh, never showed. So Ellie said I could stay at the coffee house and uh, work there in exchange for my room and board. They're kind of like my second family. Or my only family, really. Families are so overrated, Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> All those gatherings, tedious nagging, insufferable nagging, asking for food. Favors and money. I don't have contact with my own. But you know what, Bailey? You have me now. And I'm here to tell you that life isn't some big, gay, caffeinated love fest. <laughs> <laughs> if there's not love, then what? You know, it's like you're a philosophy major. I'll tell you about that. Then what? Self-reliance. <laughs> With the self-reliance comes independence. When I was 19, I thought that the world was going to come out roses too. And then someone pulls a prop eight on you, calls you a freak or an abomination of God. And at the end of the day, all you have is yourself. I know it sounds cold. And people may not like it, but they'll respect you. They may fear you, but that's as good as respect. <laughs> <laughs> Will I ever be as successful as you, Brandy? Bailey, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to feed, feed you some sugar-coated line of crap like they do down at the coffee house with other mentors. But I will tell you this. One, if you work hard, and two, if you go get me another coffee, too splendid, you know how I like it, 
and they need the business anyways at the cream shop, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to just write you that recommendation for grad school. Okay? Okay. Okay, so, oh, and while you're at it, I need you to get me this script for this movie play, uh, The Killing of Sister George. <laughs> Read it over and get back to me tomorrow and tell me what it's all about. Are you serious? Bailey, don't make me repeat myself. It's so unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm serious. Yes, ma'am. We are going to nail that audition. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Of it. Oh, I see. <laughs> You're like the 
the competition. <laughs> well, you know I would, Grace, but uh, that might diminish Brandy's chances of getting a part in the play, and wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> oh my God, Bailey. That woman has you completely whipped. I can't believe this. At least when you worked at Cream, Ellie and Robbie never asked you to compromise who you were. But that was a stupid job, Julie. This is my chance to really make something of myself. At the expense of your friends? Look, stump. <laughs> it's not my stump. Grace, it's Bailey. Bailey, look, I would never ask you to behave unethically, but everyone should have a chance at those auditions. <laughs> so, in times of scarcity, we all have to rely on our friends a little bit. And, yeah. uh, I used to believe that too, Grace. But look at Robbie. Maybe if she relied more on herself and less on Ellie, she wouldn't be the basket case she is right now. Hmm. Well, I think I've had just about enough of this. I'm gonna go home and soak in a hot tub. Coming or not, Grace? Got a copy of Sister George back at the cottage. <laughs> Beatrice Owens, sometimes you are the death of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was an asshole just now? Yeah, Bailey. You kind of were. <laughs> <laughs> washed out the earrings. Oh. What are you doing here? Hmm? Uh, nothing. I'm just trying to get some shit done. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I join you for a minute? Yeah, what the hell? I'm not really good at this crap anyway. God, I had such a crazy day at the shop. Let me guess. You lost the keys to a handcuff demo. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know, just sometimes I get so tired of giving other people adv advice on sex. That's interesting. I mean, if I actually had all the answers, I'd be having some sex of my own. <laughs> I'm serious. Get off it, Dyer. This isn't about you. It's not? <laughs> no. I do miss you, though. I miss you too, Liz. Not the sex, just the being close to somebody, you know? <laughs> Talking to somebody after I've had an exhausting day at the shop. Being held by somebody after a completely tedious afternoon of giving tips on nipple play to some poor, clueless, straight guy. <laughs> you know, they're not the only ones who need tips. Well, you never did. <laughs> and then, today, Jane's new ex-nun girlfriend came in, complaining that she didn't know how to give head. I swear! What? Oh, God! I don't know. Sometimes a drink or a line would be really great right now. Hey, Lacey, that's not funny. <laughs> Make my mom proud of me or something. 
She is proud of you, Dyer. Yeah, right. Oh, that woman, you know? It drives me fucking nuts. Where is she right now? Is she harassing those stripping picketers outside the city council office? They must be freezing out there. I swear I saw Julie Jaspers out there on my lunch break. But no, I think she took the night off from that. But, but that keeps her young, though. <laughs> <laughs> She's at the cottage with uh, Katie working on some lines for a community play or something. Oh, Katie? She's over at the cottage? Yeah, I don't really know how she wrangles her into it. I guess Katie did some acting in New York or something? I can see that went far. Isn't she the new barista here? Oh, come on, Lisa, don't be a bitch. What? Are you calling me a bitch? No, I just... Katie's a nice girl, and I just don't understand why everyone gives her such a hard time. Oh, sure. Poor Katie. So innocent. Like when you and I were having problems last year, she didn't seem so innocent when she had your, had her tongue down your throat. You know what, Lacey? Nothing happened between us. I don't know how many times you've gone through this, okay? Jesus. You know, every time I see you, I think I'm going to be okay. But I guess I'm not as tough as I think. <laughs> Good luck with your plan. Sounds great. Really great. <laughs> <laughs> Three months, and I have yet to receive an orgasm. 
there you go again. Well, I haven't received one either. What? You're not the only one who's unsatisfied. My whole life, I have existed to serve one person or another. God, my father, and now you? I'm not just here to perform services. This isn't tales of a cloistered nun, too. I have just as much right to come as you do. You look thinking. I can't believe you. I'll be in the bathroom reading psalms. <laughs> I'll be right here, reading Alice Doesn't, Feminism, Semiotic, Cinema. <laughs> Don't bother waiting up. Oh. Grace? Yeah. 
I really miss Ellie. We all do, baby. And imagine how hard it is for her, being gone, knowing so many people were dependent on her. I never thought about it like that. I always just felt like she was the one abandoning me, you know? But sometimes I really want to talk to her. I want to tell her about my new job and school, stuff like that. Yeah. Been a lot of changes for you lately, huh? <clears throat> but even more, Grace, I wish I could tell my own parents. What? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to put you out. No, no, no. I got the time. <laughs> Grace, I don't think I really like when we're coming. No, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? <laughs> that word, becoming, means you're never quite finished. Well, lately, I've been wondering if I might be able to do something about that. Like, I might have more say in the whole thing, you know? Well, I came here tonight because I'm leaving, Grace. Tallahassee. <laughs> we kind of have a little bit in common, sort of alike. My parents are these traveling evangelists, right? But that's where they retired, and I got this address from my cousin. I think I have to see them. I mean, maybe they'll have changed their mind about this little faggot they brought into the world. I don't know, but I need to see. Uh, you really built a life for yourself here, Bailey. You got good friends, you're going back to school, and that girlfriend of yours ain't bad either. <laughs> yeah, and I think she'll wait. And I think Ellie was brave enough to see what's still out there. I think I can be that brave too. Well, you're pretty tough there, Stump. I need it. Kinda like Stump, Grace. <laughs> Listen, will you tell Robbie where I'm going? I don't want to stress her out any more than she already is. And frankly, I think the two of us could use the space. I mean, we're practically living like strangers in that house. I'll tell her. One for the road. <laughs> Wait, I've got something for you. <laughs> this is something I hold very dear. It's a Wiccan talisman of luck. <laughs> I made it in a shop class when I was on a reservation in New Mexico. <laughs> I was going to wear it tomorrow for the audition. I think it's for you. I couldn't, Grace. Put it on. Break a leg there, Grace. No, Stump. You break a leg. <laughs> she was just a small man on the chessboard. Get up and tell you where to go, and you just have. Same affection. Do you know, that takes me back years. When we first met. That awful boarding house. You know, for weeks I watched you come and go and I never spoke a word to you. Hmm? Every morning you used to set off work punctually. <laughs> Ten past nine. <laughs> You were always in such a rush. I know, I dare you were watching me. And then one night I went into the bathroom just after you'd had a bath and the mirror was all steamed up and the bath mat was all 
wet and glistening where you'd been standing on it and there was a smell of <coughs> bath crystals and talcum powder <laughs> like an enchanted wood <laughs> and I, I stood quite still on the bath mat in your footprints and then I, I noticed that you'd left your comb behind it was a pink plastic comb and it had your hairs in it and I I kept that comb as a souvenir. And all that time, I'd never spoken a word to you. Beep! You have reached the office of Dr. Wendy Dooley. We are closed right now. Our hours of operation are Wednesday through Friday, 2 to 8. If you need to make an appointment, please press 1. If you need to cancel an appointment, press 2. All other inquiries, press 3. And please, remember to have a lovely, peaceful, and honest day. <laughs> Beep! Wendy? Wendy? It's Robbie. I mean, it's Roberta. Roberta Charles? I don't know why I'm calling you. It's it's so late. I guess I guess I, I just wanted to take you up on that offer. Oh God, I know what I'm doing. I just I just really need a friend right now. Robbie, Robbie, it's me. It's Wendy. That's all right. It's it's okay. I'm here. I'm right here, everything's going to be okay, just, just slow down and take a deep breath. <clears throat> Your what? Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> I hope this wasn't a bad idea. <laughs> Thank you.